Hi everyone, it's John Mitchell and in today's video, we're going to look at what's a really critical aspect of business management, which is key performance indicators or what you may see as KPIs. So KPIs play a really significant role in gauging a business's performance because they offer metrics or a criterion that managers can use to evaluate the business's ability to achieve their objectives. Now remember, we've spent lots of time throughout this course discussing a whole range of strategies that managers can implement to help achieve business objectives, and it's the KPIs that serve as that measurable benchmark that really sheds light on the effectiveness of those strategies. So KPIs can help measure the effectiveness and the efficiency of different areas of the business, and we've covered those terms before, but just as a refresher, effectiveness is the business's ability to achieve its objectives while efficiency is the business's ability to utilize their resources well and so by gathering and analyzing that kpi data managers are able to make informed decisions now it's not just about collecting data kpis do provide insights into the business's overall performance so that managers can measure the success of prior decisions that they've made, as well as help them make informed decisions as they navigate the future for the business. Now in our study design, there's 10 KPIs listed and we're going to examine each one of those in this video. So our first KPI is percentage of market share, which is a measure of the proportion of sales that a business has compared to the total sales in the market. And you'll often see that expressed as a percentage. So I've got an example here of the supermarkets market share or Australian supermarkets market share. So the total sales across Australia in the grocery industry, Woolworths has 37.1% of the total sales. Coles has 27.9% and Aldi has 9.5% of those total sales. So that means that out of every $100 that is spent on groceries throughout Australia, $37.1 would go to Woolworths, $27.9 to Coles, and $9.5 would go to Aldi. So the higher the market share is, it often suggests a strong competitive position for a business. And that could be because they've got compelling product offers, or it could be that they've got successful marketing strategies or campaigns running. Whatever it is, it's providing a level of competition or demonstrating a level of competition. And so the percentage can and likely will change over time because the market changes as well as each of the business is implementing different strategies throughout their journey to try and gain a competitive advantage. Next, we have net profit. So net profit is measuring the amount of money remaining after all expenses have been deducted from the revenue that's been earned from the business. So it's a really crucial KPI because it indicates the financial health of the business. Now, for example, if we look at a supermarket, they bring in revenue through sales. And so the more sales they bring in, the more money that is flowing into the business. Now, let's imagine that this supermarket has brought in $40,000 in revenue for the month. Now, before we calculate the profit, we need to consider the expenses that the business has in actually generating those sales. So the supermarket will have expenses for the cost of the goods that they are selling. It could be that they rent, their wage costs, as well as a whole range of other costs that they would have. Now, let's say that for this example, for the month that the supermarket has $35,000 in expenses. Now, that money that is leaving the business, and so what is remaining is net profit. Therefore, once the expenses have actually been deducted from the revenue, the supermarket is left with a $5,000 net profit for the month. Now, a business with a consistently increasing net profit is likely to be managing its costs efficiently as well as successfully driving revenue through uh, revenue growth through sales and on the other hand a falling net profit may signal issues with costs prices that the business has it could be that their sales volume is dropping or it could be a whole combination of those issues Rate of productivity growth is a KPI that assesses how efficiently a business is actually converting its inputs, things like labor, materials, machinery, equipment, into the final good or service, which we know is called an output. And so it measures the growth rate of the efficiency of the business over time. And so a higher productivity growth rate, that implies that a business is continually improving its processes because it's able to use fewer resources to produce its outputs. And that can result in lower costs as well as faster production times. Number of sales is another KPI where the business is tracking the total goods or services that they've sold within a specified period of time, such as daily, weekly, quarterly, or even annually. And so while it may seem very straightforward, it can provide valuable insights into sales trends across different times of the year. 
could be the popularity of specific products that it's showing, or it could even be the impact of a marketing campaign that's being implemented. So while businesses want their sales to be increasing, it's important that this KPI is analyzed with a combination of other KPIs because high sales does not always mean high profits, especially if the costs of the business are not controlled. So a business could be releasing a really expensive marketing campaign. Now, while the sales are increasing, doesn't necessarily mean that the business is making profit if the sales, the increase in sales does not offset the increasing costs of the marketing campaign. Next, we have the rate of staff absenteeism, which is looking at the number of days employees miss work over a particular period of time when they are expected to be there. So while all employees will need time off to recover from illness from time to time, High rates or increasing rates of absenteeism can signal potential issues with employee morale or job satisfaction because the employees are not wanting to be at work. And so in response, the business may be looking to make improvements to the workplace environment to try and attract their employees or make the environment far more attractive for employees and therefore they will be taking fewer days off. Another KPI that can identify issues with employee morale is the level of staff turnover. So the level of staff turnover measures how often employees leave the business and need to be replaced. So it's not just them leaving the business, it's the rate in which they're leaving and need to be replaced. So high staff turnover can be really costly to a business because there's expenses associated with the hiring and training of a new employees. And also, as employees are leaving at a rapid rate, it can also impact the productivity and the morale amongst the remaining staff. So high levels of staff turnover can indicate issues with the job satisfaction of the employees. It could be around their compensation, that they're not happy with their wage. It could be that there's issues with the management style being used or even just overall the business culture. So it's important that uh, businesses look at the reasons why the employees are leaving, but the level of staff turnover can indicate that there's a, an issue around staff satisfaction and employee morale. Next, we have the level of wastage, which is measuring the amount of resources that are discarded or not used effectively during the production process. So reducing wastage can decrease costs because we need to remember that every resource that is used throughout a business costs the business money. And so if part of those resources are going to waste, then that is money that is going to waste. So reducing wastage can decrease costs, it can improve efficiency, and it can even lessen the business's environmental impact. And so having a high level of wastage can cause managers to initiate change to try and improve things like their process efficiency or investing in better technology or even implementing quality control systems to try and reduce the wastage that they're producing. Number of customer complaints is another KPI and it's measuring the amount of people that are dissatisfied with the business in some respect and have notified the business of their dissatisfaction. So that dissatisfaction could be around product quality, poor service, delayed delivery or anything else that the, the, the customer is unhappy about. And so it's important that the KPIs are measured because it can help identify recurring problems in the processes or the products that need to be addressed in the business. It can also help provide insights into customer expectations and experiences and they may change over time as the market changes and by tracking customer complaints it can enable the business to stay on top of those and actually implement changes to be more relevant to their customers. And also decreasing trend in customer complaints it can be an indication of improved quality or even service delivery so it can be important to track both ways that whether customer complaints are increasing or decreasing. And it's important that businesses not only focus on reducing the number of customer complaints, but they also focus on how to handle those customer complaints because effective complaint management can help resolve the customer's issues really promptly and courteously and ensure that the customer is satisfied with the solution. Number of website hits gauges the number of times individuals are visiting a business's website. And so a high number of website hits can often indicate successful digital marketing efforts, popular products or service that the business has, or even effective search engine optimization. And it can also provide insights into customer behaviors on their website, as well as their preferences and potential areas for improvement on the website. And Google Analytics or Stat Counter are popular tools that businesses can use to measure their website traffic and their consumer behavior on their website as well as their behavior in getting to their website. And that can give the business important information about what's being effective on their website and areas they need to improve. And finally, we have the number of workplace accidents, which is measuring the number of unplanned incidents resulting in personal injury or property damage. And a higher number of accidents, it can signal problems with the business's safety protocols or procedures, insufficient employee training, or even a need to improve the equipment in the business. And so businesses are striving to keep the number 
low, the number of accidents low, or even to zero, because all employees have the right to be safe at work. And workplace accidents can also initiate significant changes within a business so that its members actually remain safe while at work. So just to recap, these KPIs are providing a comprehensive overview of a business's performance and help managers make informed decisions for the future, as well as analyze the decisions and the strategies that have been made and implemented in the past. Now, each KPI gives a different view into the business's overall health and performance, and they collectively provide a really comprehensive look into different aspects of the business. And it's crucial because it helps managers make informed decisions, set future objectives, and decide on future strategies that they're going to implement for the business to help them achieve the business objectives. And they can pinpoint areas that need improvement and also recognize and reinforce the areas where the business is actually performing well. So we need to remember that KPIs are not just about collection of data. They are about understanding and improving business performance. So the next time you look at these KPIs, remember that you're not just looking at numbers, but at the story of the business's journey towards its objectives. So that brings us to the end of this video. Can't wait to see you in the next video where we're going to continue through this outcome and looking at reviewing performance and looking at the need for change. But until then, just remember that for questions, activities, and helping your VCE journey, then come on over to teachingbubble.com.